Hello Dublin, I'm Martin and I'm a web developer from a German company. It's a pretty small company, it's called Bücher.de. And it's a pleasure for me being here today. And I want to talk with you about um, driving mobile success by optimizing landing pages. And we had just right now a great um, speech from Amar about um, what we developers should improve. And I will tell you what I did over the past years for making our website faster. So um, before we start, I will tell you who we are because I'm, I'm pretty sure um, nobody knows us already. <laughs> so um, we were founded in 1999 and we are pretty small. We are around 30 people working at the company and four of them are web developers there and I'm one of the four. So um, the main part I have is um, all about the front end. So CSS and JavaScript, um, that's my word. Um, we're a pure online player. We don't have any local stores, so we're just selling online. And our global Alexa rank is at position 40,400. Um, so, yeah, in Germany we're on position 703. So we're not a big player on the market. We're not as big as Amazon or eBay or Zalando. Um, and for the guys who speak German, um, they pretty know we're selling books. Um, we're selling a lot of books. But we're not only selling books, um, we're also selling um, Nintendo, smartphones, games, all the other stuff. But selling books in Germany is pretty interesting. For example, let's say you want to buy the new Dan Brown book, which is called Origin, and if you go to Amazon, um, you have to pay 28 euro. Um, if you go to your local bookstore in your town, you have to pay 28 euro. And um, if you come to our website, you have to pay 28 euro too. Um, that's because um, we have a fixed book price in Germany. So there's no price bar and we need other benefits for our customer that they buy their books at our shop and not at Amazon. So um, for us, um, performance is um, a very good um, benefit for the customers. So, um, well, that's what the people usually think. Um, if I'm talking about page speed improvements, um, I will talk about um, Google page speed, which is a score index. Um, which was already introduced by Emma. And I will talk about um, the landing, uh, the loading time in seconds. And the people usually think if you have a good page speed score, you also have a good loading time. And um, the people usually think that um, if you improve the score once, it's improved forever. Yeah, well, um, that's the reality. So um, there's absolutely no correlation between the two scores. Um, and it could be that you have today a very good page speed score and after a week some of your developers did a small improvement of the shop and the score crashed down. Um, I will give you an example later and um, here it's still an up and down. So um, the first important point is page speed is not equal loading time. And um, that we can talk about improvements of landing pages we have to talk about our web shop. And we have a custom web shop. It's a PHP web shop, and that's the shop how it looked like when I came into the company three years ago. We had a special shop for desktop and for smartphones, and we also had one for tablets, but I skipped it. Um, and when I came into the company, there was already a responsive web project, so um, they told me it's 80% finished, and I started working on a project, and I realized, um, yeah, well, I would do it completely different. Um, I talked to my boss, and um, we decided then we could restart the project and that's what we did. So um, in June 2015, I re relaunched our new responsive web, web shop. And um, yeah, well, there was one big problem. Um, at the initial scope of the, of the responsive web um, project, it was only designed for desktop and tablet. Yeah, well, I did this uh, big uh, mistake and decided to do the same and build a mobile shop later. So in June 2050, we had the new responsive web shop for desktop and tablet. And um, yeah, well, we had still our old mobile shop. Hmm. By the way, that was um, the baddest decision I made. Um, yeah, but first, um, let's um, take a closer look to the scores. So um, you will see that scoreboard a few more times through my presentation. The left one is the page speed score, and the right one is usually something with the loading time in seconds. And there you see that our page speed score increased to 89, and it's a green score, it's pretty cool. Um, on the right side you see we had problems when we launched, but well, it's like usual, um, it was a very big project. And I was able to fix um, all the issues, 
And in June 2015, the new responsive web shop was nearly as fast as the old. Um, we had a much better page speed score. So um, yeah, we reached the sunny island. So that would be a good point for breaking the presentation. <laughs> but uh, we don't. <laughs> I will tell you the truth about mobile. Um, so um, let's talk about mobile. Um, building a responsive web shop for desktop and mobile is a challenge because, for example, um, the date picker. Um, all of you know if you have a smartphone and you have to choose a date, there's a native element. At the um, desktop browser, there should be a native element because it's part of the HTML5 standard, but not every browser is supporting this. So um, yeah, well, you can't use it. Um, you need third party, therefore. And we are also having a flyout navigation, which is pretty cool for desktop. If you go over um, one of our navigations, you see um, a sub-navigation. Yeah, well, a uh, smartphone usually don't have a mouse, so it's not needed. And um, also, we have to talk about images. Um, Emil told us already we should resize them. Uh, yeah, we recognize the same. Um, we resize them. <laughs> so um, I would, therefore, you need, you need a process for doing this. So um, for us, um, our responsive mobile shop launched in October 2015, and that's how it looked. Um, yeah, and that's how we built it. Uh, we can call the concept mobile last. Um, today, everyone is talking about <laughs> mobile first. Um, the first guys are talking about mobile only. Um, we did it exactly the other way. Um, so it's time for um, taking a closer look to the scores. And there we see that our page speed score crashed down to 73. Yeah. Hmm. And um, on, the, on the other side, we see the average page download time, and the page download time doubles. Um, that's like expected because we had a very simple and very fast mobile shop. And uh, now we're serving a responsive mobile shop, which has much more functionality. So uh, we have to get the time somewhere else back. Um, that's like expected. Um, we did an A-B test for launching um, our new mobile shop. And um, there we recognized that we had problems with the performance. So um, I took a closer look at what really happens. And, um, yeah, I recognized um, that the page size of our CSS and JavaScript was too big. So um, I looked around, and I was able to reduce our JavaScript and CSS code by 130 kilobytes in around one day. And um, I'm not talking about minimizing. I'm talking about refactoring. Um, it happens exactly what um, Amar told us. Uh, we had a lot of libraries which we are not using. And for desktop, we didn't care because it was fast. Um, for mobile, it cared. So um, yeah, there's a great concept which I want to introduce you now that's called um, performant budget. So for example, let's say um, I want that our website loads in three seconds over 3G network. So um, the budget is 288 kilobyte. And there are a lot of calculators out there. And um, the cool point at the budget is, um, let's say I reach the, bud uh, I reach the bad budget and um, I want to add a new JavaScript library which has 10 kilobytes. So I have to serve, to reduce the JavaScript code first by 10 kilobytes before I could use it. And um, that's, that's a great part of the concept because I get a challenge between um, my developers and between the departments. If I'm not able to use my JavaScript code by 10 kilobytes, I could ask, for example, the CSS guy if he could help me. And um, yeah, that's a good point. So um, I also recognize that, that DOM elements slow down performance. I talked already about the flyout navigation. And uh, we don't need it at the mobile shop, um, but we still had it um, as hidden elements. And I decided that um, I will build the flyout only if it is needed. So the first time um, a customer wants to see the flyout navigation, um, then I built the elements. So I was able to reduce all of our elements, um, or I was able to reduce 800 of our elements for every page. And um, we're having a lot of product sliders. And there I did exactly the same. So um, normally, our product sliders have around four or five pages. But um, how many customers will ever look um, through all pages? So um, I built the elements only if they are needed. And there's a small video which illustrates that. Um, therefore, I need um, the data for building the elements. And I stored them as a JSON object. And if the customer triggers on the next button, uh, then I take um, the JSON object, and then I build the elements. So um, with that two fixes, I was able to reduce our DOM elements from 2,400 to around 800. And the interesting point is 
that the client execution time reduced from 500 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. And um, that improvement depends on the device. I did exactly the same test with an um, iPhone 4, and um, there the improvement was more than one second. So um, that's a lot. So um, the big question is, why does that happen? Normally, the DOM elements are not that expensive. Um, Ama already told about image lazy loading. We are using it too. So um, we load the images only if they are visible. But calculating if the image is visible, that's expensive. So um, at the past, um, we had images at the flyout navigation, and we had the images um, from the second page of the product slider, and we had to calculate if they are visible. Um, now the images didn't exist, so um, that's the reason why um, our client execution time was much faster. And um, there are tons of library for using image lazy loading. So if you're not having it right now, um, you can look at GitHub and search for them. Um, we have, for example, a custom implementation and it has around 30 lines of code, I think. So um, now let's take a closer look to the scores, um, what happens after that improvements. And um, there we see that the page speed score is still the same. Um, the average page load time in seconds is also still the same. Um, that's interesting because we had a much faster website, but the scores are still the same. Um, the question is what happens. So um, I took a closer look to the um, loading time, and I took a closer look to the first hit users. And there I realized um, that there was a big improvement that out of the 130 kilobytes I saved at our CSS and JavaScript files. But um, I didn't see the improvements of the DOM elements. And um, yeah, well, that happens because um, we are using asynchronous JavaScript. And for that loading statistics, um, we take care about Google Analytics. And Google Analytics didn't know when our asynchronous JavaScript starts, and it doesn't know when our asynchronous JavaScript is finished. So um, at that point of the presentation, I will tell you um, that you should take care which scores you can trust. So um, yeah, we had an own um, logging for our client execution because we didn't find it at analytics. So um, now we're making a very big jump. We're in January 2017, and Google made a mobile site audit of, of our website. And um, I received the presentation from a colleague of my department, and I watched through the presentation, and I recognized that there are five problems we had. Um, compression, browser caching, optimizing images, um, visible content, and the rendering blocking. So um, first, let's see what happens with the score. And our page speed score crashed down to 63 in January 2017. So we lost 10 score points. On the right side, you see the average loading time in seconds. And there you see we had big problems in January and in April, but I was able to fix them. And um, totally, our website was around 8% faster but um, we lost 10 score points. And um, yeah, um, I realized that I did a lot of performance improvements, but I never improved um, the page speed score because it wasn't that important for me. And um, in January 2017, I decided that I would fix the page speed score, and um, yeah, that's what I started. So um, I took the low hanging fruits, um, enabling compression it was a third party problem, so I wrote down some emails. Um, the hook is yellow because um, I'm not sure if all of them are fixed. Um, third party libraries took months until they fixed it. That's a problem. Um, I fixed the browser caching. Um, I optimized the images. I will talk about that on the next slide. And um, I um, fixed the pre arising visible content. And um, therefore, you should know that if the browser renders your website, it starts from top to bottom. And we are having a left sidebar. So the browser first detects our left sidebar, and second, it detects our content. It would be much better if the browser first sees the content and second, the sidebar. And um, that's what we did. Um, we moved our sidebar to the, red, to the right with HTML. But the customer usually wants to see the sidebar on the left. So um, we use CSS for moving it back. And um, there's a short video which illustrates this. And um, the interesting part is, um, having that fixed live was um, a chop of 50 minutes. 
50 minutes later, I had it online for our web shop and it was working. And it's totally simple and it's totally logic, but I never thought about the problem and I never realized that that would be a problem. And um, because we're also having a responsive mobile shop, um, we had the sidebar also at the mobile shop, which was just a hidden element. So um, that problem affects um, desktop and also mobile. So um, yeah. Um, now we are seeing two images. Um, it's a pretty, uh, it's a bit difficult to see the difference. Um, one is the optimized and one is the original. They are still the same format. They are still still JPEGs, and um, the improvement is around 25 kilobyte. So um, yeah, the left one is the original, the right one is the optimized. Um, that's exactly what Ama told us already. Um, there are pretty good um, tools for improving the images, and we are using now one of them. Um, I think JPEG Optim so far. Um, yeah, and we're having three of that banners at our start page, and we have a few content banner. So I was able to reduce our start page by around 100 kilobyte, and that's really a lot. And um, we talked already about the process for resizing the images, and I took exactly that process and I improved the process. I added an optimization layer. So um, if the image is uploaded, um, then the image is uh, resized after it's um, optimized, and then it's uploaded to our um, image server. So um, yeah, you need process for processes for sustainability. You can't improve the image by yourself because it's a lot of work. Um, yeah. So now we're also talking about above the fold. Um, yeah, Ema already introduced us into that topic. Um, we should priorize um, the above the fold content, and that content depends on the device. So um, on a desktop browser, the above the fold content is much bigger than on a smartphone. So um, yeah, and we should inline um, the CSS and JavaScript stuff um, for priorizing the content. And um, I did this, and uh, yeah, well, um, it was the biggest performance improvement project we ever had at my company. And um, yeah, it took two weeks, so um, it's not that long. <laughs> but yeah, um, so um, let's take a closer look what really happens um, the step of the fold. And um, there you see that's our old website, and the rendering starts after four seconds. And um, that's the time when our CSS file was completely downloaded. Then the browser could start rendering. Um, with the new variant was above the fold, um, the rendering could start after two seconds. So we are two seconds earlier. For that test, we used a um, 3G network. Um, yeah, and after four seconds, um, the above the fold content has already 90% um, compared to the old variant um, where we had just 21%. It's much more. And um, at the end, um, the new variant is a half second faster. Um, the interesting fact is this page is still the same. Um, we don't have more requests or we don't have more images or less images. It's, it's the same page. But because we can pre which element um, should be downloaded first, uh, we are able to improve it. And we did an A-B test um, with that. And um, there we realized that we had a conversion uplift of 4% for all the users which have a mobile connection at our website. So um, now let's take a closer look to the scores. And um, there we see with the low-hanging fruits, the score goes to 66. Um, yeah, well, there were a lot of work, but um, the improvement with three points is not that big. And um, above the fold moved our score to 93. And um, having a page speed score greater than 90 is pretty good. So um, on the right side, you see the average loading time in seconds. And there you see that the loading time also reduces. Um, it reduces because of the um, page speed improvements, but it also reduces um, by accident. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I will tell you why. Um, we are selling books, and books have usually um, reading samples. And they are third party. And um, some of the reading samples were just a hidden element. Um, and they were completely loaded um, when the page was loaded, but they weren't needed. They are only needed if the customer wants to see the reading sample. And I realized that because of PageSpeed, because PageSpeed told me that the images of the reading samples are not optimized. And I was wondering why the hell we are downloading them 
we're not needing them. So um, that's why I call it by accident. Um, if you start improvements on your website, you usually find a lot of other stuff you can improve too. So um, now we compare us with the big player on the market. We compare us with Amazon and Zalando. Um, we use therefore webpagetest.org and um, a 3G network. So um, could you please start the video? Thank you. So uh, we started the rendering after two seconds. Um, we noticed already. Um, Amazon took around 3.9 seconds and Zalando a bit uh, later. And uh, we are close as fast as Amazon, so um, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, well, Salando is uh, still loading. Okay, um, it's finished after 11 seconds, so it seems like they could improve something. Um, yeah. So um, one interesting fact is um, we never told Google that we improved our scores, but they recognized it. So um, it seems like they're watching us. Um, <laughs> And I think they're watching you too. So um, they asked us for making a case study, and uh, yeah, of course, um, we did it. Um, if you want to read it, um, it's only in German. And <laughs> um, after a few months, they asked me, hey, Martin, are you interested in coming to Dublin and talk about your improvements? Uh, yeah, for sure. That's the reason why I'm standing here today. Um, yeah, the next very interesting point is monitoring. And there's a great API from Google um, where you could get your page speed score. And that's what we did since March 2017. Sadly, we did it since March and not since 2015. But you see um, that we had a pretty good score. And in um, September, the score crashed down to 85. So interesting. And um, yeah, well, it's a funny story. A colleague of my department had a problem with caching images. And um, then he realized that I cache all images for two weeks. And he thought, why the hell we are caching images for two weeks? One day should be enough. And he changed it. And that, that's what happens. So um, yeah, thanks to our monitoring, and we're also having an alerting if the um, monitoring gets better, I recognized this one day later. And I was able to fix this with my colleague. And we're also watching some of our competitors. So maybe you're one of them. Um, I, will, I want to share one scoreboard, but don't worry, um, I wouldn't name the company. So um, that's what they did. Um, they had a score of 60, and in July 2017, they improved it. And um, they improved the score to 85. That's a pretty good job. Um, yeah, well, and it seems like the project was done, and nobody takes care about the score, because the score crashed down. And um, today, they have a score of around 75. So yeah, if you improve your score, um, I could really recommend you that you use a monitoring for watching your score. So um, let's take a closer look to our last scoreboard. And there you see that we are today at a score of 96. And we are not able to improve it anymore. So page speed is done for us. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and on the right side, you see um, the average page loading time in seconds. We had a problem in June, and you didn't see the problem at our score. Um, yeah, I was able to fix this, and right now we are having an average loading time of 3.3 .3 seconds. So um, page speed is done. Um, the loading time isn't. So I, I have still a list at my um, office, and I want to improve our score, our loading time. Um, yeah, well, see what happens next year, maybe. <laughs> um, so I reached nearly the end of my presentation. So it's time for talking about lessons learned. And one very big point is it's an ongoing project. It's never done. Um, set up processes make it sustainable. And um, you don't need a dev team with 20 experts. But you should have at least one which takes care. And um, there are a lot of low-hanging fruits out there. And you can reach them most of them in less than one day. Um, you could start with them. But also the, the higher fruits, for example, above the fold, they are not the big project which took months. So um, yeah, I'm sure you could um, also improve them. Yeah, uh, that's the end. Thank you very much.